Good morning, Santa Clarita. Hey there. How are you? It's good to have you. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. My name is Matt Watson, and you are listening to SCVI and I lead school's Eye on the Valley. Our show, Eye on the Valley, is brought to you, as I said, by SCVI and I lead schools. We are a network of charter schools with campuses in Castaic, Aguadulce, Lancaster, We've also got a fully accredited online school, a burgeoning homeschool called iLead Exploration. You know what? Uh, just go to our website, iLeadSchools.org, and uh, and check us out. You can find information and links to all of our school's websites right there at iLeadSchools.org. So whether your child needs a classroom-based program Monday through Friday, a hybrid program, an online program, uh, a home study model, whatever, whatever style and, and presentation of education that your child needs, we've got it because... Because you know what? If, if your child can't learn the way we teach, we need to teach the way your child can learn. And that's what we do at I Lead Schools. One more time, iLeadSchools.org and check us out. So yeah, we've got our eye on education here in Santa Clarita and across the nation. But like our show says, we, uh, we keep our eye on the valley as well, bringing you everything that you need to know about what's what here in the valley. And, uh, and we do so while trying to put a smile on your face as we ease on into the weekend uh, you know, it, it's been an absolutely great week. Why wouldn't uh, Friday and the weekend continue the same? It's been absolutely beautiful out there. Been a, it's been a fantastic week, hasn't it? Has it? How's your week been? Has, has it been great? So tell me, what, what made it so great? Are, are you thinking it hasn't been great so far? You know, maybe maybe when uh, when I say that, you're like, eh, not, not really, Matt. Uh, um I, you know what? I bet I can help. Whether whether you have indeed had a great week, or you're thinking that maybe you haven't, I um, I, I bet I can convince you that you have. I want you to try this, all right? And, and and Carlos, you try this too. Whether it's been a great week or or a not so great week, I want you to think think about this week. I want you to think of two great things, two fantastic things that happened this week. Go ahead. Just just I want you to think of two things that happened this week that were great. All right. So. So what are two great things that have happened in your life, in your sphere of influence? I'm going to go ahead and start. You know, um, my three stepbrothers and I, we went to surprise my my other stepbrother. There's five of us guys in the family. And so four of us went out to Las Vegas and surprised my stepbrother for his 49th birthday. And, and that was a lot of fun to be able to hang out and spend the weekend with my brothers. That was that was amazing. That was it was great. So that's one. And, you know, I, I've gotten to spend some great quality time with that uh, with that special someone in my life this week. And, and, you know, we've got a lot more time together planned coming up this weekend. So that was great. So those two things have, have, have gone into making my week absolutely fantastic. All right, Carlos, it's your turn. H have you got them? What, what two great things have happened this week, buddy? Well, we get to be here, so that's one good thing. There we go. Being at KHTS is always great. Celebrated a friend's birthday yesterday, so that was pretty good to get to hang out with everyone and reminisce on old times. Fantastic. And then another interesting okay. thing that happened was we finally wrapped up our semester at CSUN. Fantastic. You're a matador, just well. like me. All right. All right. Engineer Carlos going for extra credit, sharing three great things this week. So fantastic. So what about you out there? What two great things have happened in your world this week? Hmm? Come on. Just two things. See, I, th I think you can already identify at least one. See, there's the other one. There you go. Those things happen this week. So hold on to that, right? Because it was indeed a great week. Now focus on making the weekend great too, because you know what? It is your choice. It's a decision. So go out and make that weekend great. And you know, I know for several reasons. Here's two reasons that your weekend is going to be great. First of all, you're starting it with Eye on the Valley. You're starting it with us, right? And second, it's a three-day weekend. We've got a holiday weekend. We are celebrating those who have put their all on the line for us this weekend. So it is going to be a fantastic weekend. You know what else is going to be great? Today's show. That's right. How's, how's this sound for you? This is going to be great. You pour another cup of coffee. We chat with a few really interesting visitors. We play a bit of trivia, and then we all take off early to start a long weekend. huh? How's that sound? 
right? No meetings after the show. Just let's uh, producer Sarah. Let's just cancel everything and, and and start that weekend. Well, producer Sarah, you can't. You had a long weekend last weekend. So, all right, I digress. Let's let's get into our show, right? Um, you know, first up on Eye in the Valley, we've got Kate Wolf. Kate Wolf is the interim director of iLead Online. She's here to talk about what they've got going on this summer that their learners and your child can take advantage of. That's right. In in just a couple of seconds, and in hour number two, we've got Jeff Barber from the Maine. Jeff is Jeff is one of my my favorite guests. He's got a lot going on down here in New Hall at the Maine, and he's got one of the coolest nicknames out there. If we have time, I'll, I'll make sure that he tells the story again. So just stick around and find out why Jeff is so cool and, and, and what they're doing down there at the Maine. And and yes, for you trivia fans, Big T will be here to, to horse around and find out, if you know what I mean. So uh, settle in, and let's make this great week even better and let's do that together. My first guest, as I said, is Kate Wolf with iLead Online. Kate began teaching as an English instructor at both the college level and at the at a private college prep high school. She came to iLead in 2016 and has been with us ever since. She currently homeschools her sixth grade twin girls, I think they're still in sixth grade, and uh, her third grade son, who I was actually playing around with a little bit yesterday. He's a great guy. And she also ha uh, has a kindergartner alongside uh, her husband and Kate is just grateful to be working for a school that meets learners exactly where they are values each child's story and finds a way to engage them in an authentic personal way Kate good morning welcome to Eye in the Valley good morning thank you for having me of course it's so good to have you Kate we always love chatting with you about what's going on at I lead online so before we get into this amazing opportunity that you're offering to almost any student in Southern California, tell us first about iLead Online. When did you open up? What grades do you serve? And where is your school? Sure. So we started in 2015, um, and we serve learners all, um, from TK all the way through 12th grade. Oh. Uh, we are a virtual school. So our learners learn wherever they are. Um, we provide full support with an uh, amazing team of teachers and coaches and counselors um, so that kids can get their own personalized learning plan. Um, they use technology and hands-on projects to learn at home, get out in their community, learn there. Um, but we're super flexible and, and we're committed to helping kids learn. Oh, fantastic. And, and so, like I said, as I was uh, talking about our schools before, um, we have a bunch of different types of schools, different uh, what we call educational models uh, to make sure that we're meeting the needs of each of our kids. And then you're able to customize within the, the online school space to make sure even though, you know, because each of your learners is different, you're able to, to customize that. That is fantastic. They learn basically from home or wherever they're at, right? Because it's it's technology based. Um, but let me ask you this, Kate. You're not the only online school in the market. In fact, online learning has been around uh, for a long time. In fact, it morphed out of the you know the correspondence learning. Um, and as a, as a matter of fact, as a school principal, I got to know several online schools as I was working with my my high schoolers. The problem I found though, Kate, was that most of them are kind of like they're like online textbooks, right? Your kid reads the material, memorizes as much as they can, and then takes a unit test, kind of a, a click, click quiz kind of thing. So how is iLead Online different, or or are you? That's a really great question. I think that you hit on a very common stereotype, um, and not unfounded, right, of online learning. Oh, yeah. um, but iLead Online is committed to breaking all of those. Uh, existing molds because we believe that kids should be as a as in my bio right met where they are right. um, and that learning should be fun and engaging and hands-on so while we do have our online platform it's called a learning management system where kids can go in and access all their content they can read they watch videos they do projects they um, communicate with their teachers um, all of the content that's in those classes is project-based so they get to get hands-on. They get to move away from the computer screen. They get to be um, in their community and in nature and, and doing things that matter to them and that are personal to them as an essential part of that learning process. So we are anything but a school that provides just a bunch of reading online and then a test at the end. And, and beyond that, 
we assess kids in different ways, right? We want to see the different ways that they can show us that they really understand and they've taken in what they've learned. So we welcome discussion with them about like, this is how I'm learning and this is what I'm doing and, and this is where I want to go. And, and we wrap that into the curriculum that we already have. But our courses are all um, originally created by our credentialed instructors. Um, there's no canned content. And um, we work really hard to make sure that uh, kids are getting what they need. That sounds great. It, it really does. But I want to get I want to drill down a little bit because um, you mentioned before you're, you're TK through 12th grade. So you've got kids as young as four years old. Um, and, and I want to know how that works. But let me work backwards. All right. So uh, so folks can kind of get an idea of uh, of what it looks like from. The, the the learner's lens from the family's lens. Um, so let's start at the top. Let's start with high school. Okay. Um, tell us what the high school experience looks like through the lens of your learners. Did sure. We... Oh, so, okay. um, our learners who are in high school, they get wraparound support. So when they enroll with us, um, they first are supported by our registration team who walks them through the whole process. And then before they start with us, they get what we call an academic coach. And that's kind of like their educational guide. Um, your academic coach talks to the learner, helps you pick classes, goes through transcripts, creates a graduation plan, um, sets goals together with the learner, uh, orders their classes. And then as they move through their actual classes, that academic coach stays with them to monitor their progress, create special plans, um, collaborate with the individual course instructors to make sure that the learners are, are succeeding and that are on track for their post high school plans, either college or career or whatever it may be. And then in addition to that academic coach, high school learners have uh, their individual teachers, right? Which is kind of like you would normally get at a high school where sure. you go to your chemistry class and your English class. Each of those classes has individually um, fully credentialed teachers that are subject matter experts. So mm -hmm. they get a whole team of um, educational um, experts to support their learning that collaborate together and, and, and work to, to make sure that the kids are, are um, moving through the program. Okay. And, and so you said, you know, each class has its, its teacher, its credentialed expert in that area, like a, a typical classroom based or traditional high school, but unlike that, that, traditional high school, they also have a coach to make sure they're on track, make sure they're learning to to guide them through and, and help them get unstuck, if you were, when they get stuck, those kind of things. Um, so that's high school, right? But I think you heard in my voice before, Kate, I am a little skeptical about about the younger grades. You offer, as you said, TK through 12th grade at iLead Online. So what does iLead Online look like, say, for a kindergarten or a first grader? That can't be the same, is it? It's a little bit different because we acknowledge that kids at different ages have different needs. So in the younger grades, obviously the content's a little bit different, right? But still hands-on, still project-based, still standards aligned. Um, but they, instead of having lots of different teachers, have the one teacher that they work with who um, teaches them in their class but also works as their coach. So it's a smaller group for the younger kiddos, and those kids have access to what we call campfire. So it's multiple times a week where they come in virtually um, and they learn together and they share and they talk and they have a lot of fun. Um, our high school kiddos also have live instruction opportunities, but it looks a little bit different for them. For them, it's a weekly advisory with their coach and then they get um, live instruction hours that are optional because we understand that kids, especially the older ones that have lots of activities or schedules, that um, that they can get what they need from those live instruction hours, but it's they're not they're not penalized if they aren't able to attend. Um, but for our littlest kids, the campfires are are how they connect virtually, um, and then they have a, a smaller group with their 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 one we call them co-facilitators. But it's it's pretty <laughs> much your your kindergarten teacher, and our um, our kindergarten teacher is amazing. She is uh, fully credentialed and an expert in early childhood education. Our youngest learners, we focus on play-based learning, um, and we really want to make learning fun for them. Mm. What? So, so you did touch on something that I know a lot of families worry about. I've had a lot of families tell me, uh, you know what, I don't know how I feel about my six-year-old or even my 16-year-old, 
being on their computer all day, right? Because when my kid gets home from school, he wants to get on his computer, gets on, get on his phone. Um, so I don't know if I want them to be on their computer all day while they're in school as well. Do you find that that's a problem? You know, all of our classes are project-based, as I mentioned. So there are so many different opportunities for kids to move away from the computer. And, this, and we're actually committed to that kind of experience. So um, we welcome parents to be partners with us in making sure that their kids are getting what they need, either in front or away from the computer. Um, but also, um, all of the content is there for a parent to pick up if they want and say, hey, I want to do this activity with you. For example, a kindergartner might practice writing numbers out on the driveway with sidewalk chalk, and they can take a picture of it, and they can submit that. So everything has hands-on options then that, that the parent can partner with us to learn. Um, and you know, beyond that, if the parent needs to be a little bit more hands-off, we also have that team that can step in and offer lots of direction. So we cater to what our families and our kids need. Yeah. And that includes moving away from the computer. We believe that kids should not be in front of the screen all day. Yeah, and I've seen some of your um, your what you call course walkthroughs and, and classroom designs, and they really are designed to, okay, let's check in and, and then get away from that computer and get your hands on, exactly like you said. Now, I do admit it, Kate, I was playing shill for you a little bit there. Um, I do understand the model, and I've seen the amazing things that your your teachers and, and more importantly, your learners are, are accomplishing at iLead Online. I do have to say, when when y'all first opened your virtual doors in 2015, some of my students at the high school would tell me that in at iLead Online, they were actually receiving more personalized care and attention from their teachers than even in their Monday through Friday classroom-based courses, and that just blew me away. That's what really sold me. Um, now, um, I actually attended one of your informational meetings earlier this week for prospective families. And um, and some of the families were asking, now, if my kid's working from home, how is this different from homeschool? Can you explain the difference a little bit? Sure. So um, ILEAD has several different programs, as you mentioned. One of them is the homeschool program where um, families have access to their what they call an EF or kind of like a teacher. And the parent works with the EF to pull the curriculum, pick it and teach the learner. Um, and those programs um, are a little bit more independent in terms of um, what the parent wants to pick and how they how they want to um, how they want to design their learner's education alongside the EF, of course, their 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 teacher. At iLead Online, um, we have all of the curriculum already ready to go for you. Uh, we uh, Learners are able to choose their classes along with their coach. So they get a coach, which is the same thing as that EF, right? That teacher that works alongside sure. that learner. But then also all of their classes are already ready to go for them with everything they need. Um, it's standards aligned. There are uh, plenty of projects. There's tons of voice and choice. So it's a, a one-stop shop. Having said that, um, there's also plenty of room for that customization that a lot of kids and parents are looking for. So it's all there, but if something in a class isn't working for a learner, for example, if a high school learner isn't connecting with a book that they're reading, um, or maybe they have a passion for a particular sport, for example, maybe they mountain bike and they're in physics, um, they can work with the coach and their facilitator and their parent to design a project that meets those physics standards. For example, how physics works in mountain biking, right? Like yeah. force and all of those things. Cool. Um, we do projects like that all of the time and they're incredibly fun. So we get to offer the best of both worlds. You have all the curriculum ready for you, a whole team of teachers, but you also have complete freedom to work with us to customize. Kate Wolf is the director of iLead Online Charter School. When we get back, they've got some incredible things going on this summer at iLead Online that, that starts up at July 1st. So regardless of where your kids are going to school, you're not going to want to miss this because you can join in as well. I'm Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCVI and iLead School's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS.
You know, the only thing I don't like about doing a morning show is now I'm going to have headphone hair for the rest of the day. But that's okay. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. I am Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCVI and iLead School's Eye on the Valley. I'm joined this morning by the director at iLead Online Charter School, Kate Wolf. So, Kate, before the, the break, you were mentioning uh, that uh, um, all the great things going on at iLead Online. And um, I wanted to ask, are you still in rolling uh, for the fall for the fall absolutely and not only are we enrolling for the fall but we have our track c which starts july 1st which is our you know yeah tell us what is track c so it, it starts so i can start if my kid enrolls at iLead online they can start in in what august i suppose but track c what is track c so iLead online offers two different tracks or kind of like schedules or calendars for kids who enroll full time with us. Okay. One of them starts July 3rd, actually, and uh -huh. then moves all the way through the year to May. And then the other one is your more traditional calendar that begins um, in August and goes all the way through June. And our track C is what we call the one that starts on July 3rd and moves through the summer months. Okay, so it, it, it just kind of starts the school year earlier, right? You're going July to May instead of August to June. Um, so <laughs> it's an online school, so the weather isn't an issue. Uh, so why would a, a, maybe a middle schooler or a high schooler enroll in Track C? What are some of the reasons that you're seeing that, that kids are saying, yeah, sign me up for July? Sure. So um, we get lots of kids who want to who want to take some extra classes, get an early start, avoid learning loss during the summer months. Oh, yeah. um, but we also get lots of families who may attend other schools during their regular school calendars, which typically go from August to June. Um, and they choose to enroll with us full time for July, starting July 3rd. They take a couple of classes with us and then um, they choose to go back to whatever school that they were at before. They're always welcome to stay all year. A lot of times we get that happening. People really love us and they decide to stay. Huh. But it's a great opportunity for kids to maybe make up a class that they didn't do so well in during their regular school year or um, get ahead, right? Take a, um, um, an extra class, like maybe they want, they're an eighth grader and they want to take Algebra 1 and get that requirement over with. Um, knock out their PE requirement. Uh, there's lots of different reasons why kids might want to um, take a track C class. I, I think top of them is to make sure that they're continuing their learning and then they're on track, especially for the older ones, to graduate high school. Um, and then for our littlest kiddos, uh, we have adventure experiences during the summer that are meant to prevent learning loss um, and to engage kids in a way that is fun hands-on, and not too overwhelming, right? They're still learning, but they're doing it in um, really kind of creative ways. Wow. So you you just said a lot. There's So you've got, um, you know, kids that are uh, avoiding that learning loss. They're starting a little bit earlier. Maybe they're, they're getting ahead, right? I heard there was a friend of mine telling me that she wanted her her son, that, that a college counselor had advised that her son get five years of math in high school and, and there's only four years of high school. And so maybe someone could get ahead by, by taking a class in track C or, you know, I was identifying with something. Kate, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on the air. I don't know if I've ever admitted it, but when I was a sophomore in high school, I actually, I failed the second semester of geometry. And so then I had to put that entire year. No, I actually, yeah, it was the second semester, I think. And so I had to like put a year on hold so that I could go back and retake that. I could have just picked that up in track C. And then you said, I can attend iLead online, pick up that class, whether it's to add a fifth year of math or get caught up on my four years of math or, or, or any other subject for that matter. And then if I wanted to in, in August, I could head back to the school that I had been regularly attending. Is that possible? Absolutely. And um, if you live in one of the counties we serve, they're absolutely free. So, yeah, I wanted to ask that as well. Your tuition is absolutely free. Fantastic. Um, because you're a, a public charter school, you, your tuition's already been paid by your tax dollars. That is great. And then the, the younger kids, you said they can take their adventure courses to stay engaged, avoid that learning loss during the summer. Um, and the track C, those adventure courses are, are a little bit more entertaining, a little bit more engaging so the kids don't feel like it's all school all year long, right? 
Exactly. And they're paced a little bit more slowly, right, than you would think of a, as a high school kid who's making up a semester class or trying to get a semester course. So um, it's meant to be accessible and fun and adventurous for them. Um, and then also, you know, there's like study skills classes and foundational math and English classes. So if a learner needs to brush up a little bit on writing skills or you've noticed that they really want to like go into high school or, or move through high school building those essential skill sets, we have those classes as well. Fantastic. Um, so that's track C for, for kids who want to get started and, and do some work in the summer and, and uh, whether it get caught up, accelerate, deepen their understanding, take an extra course. Um, now, Kate, but your, your school also has a lot of new offerings that are coming this year. Let, let's talk about some of them. You've got over a dozen CTE pathways. So first of all, explain to me what CTE stands for and what a CTE pathway is. Sure. So CTE stands for Career and Technical Education. And the goal of Career and Technical Education is to allow learners to, students, to dive into their interests um, and take classes that help them grow those interests, um, eventually with the intent of them being able to complete three year-long classes and have something that they can take away on their resume or start their career in whatever uh, pathway they've taken. Those pathways are usually three, as I mentioned, three year long classes, but learners can certainly take one or two. It's not, you don't have to be in all three of them. And they vary, right? We have arts uh, and entertainment. So we have video production, we have um, photography, we have patient care. So in nursing, we have sports, an amazing sports medicine pathway. Um, and they kind of just let learners dip their toes in and, and get a feel for future career possibilities. So we really want to make sure that we're giving learners every opportunity to reach their post high school plans, whether that's college or career or both. Um, CTE classes really give us that chance. This is fantastic. I'm looking at your offerings here. You, you, you've got a lot of um, a career and technical education pathways, preparing kids for careers in animation, game design, fine arts, photography. Uh, but then also, you know, on the business side, you've got a, a pathway called entrepreneurship and business, digital arts, uh, finance, um, and then you've got child development. You mentioned patient care, journalism, sports medicine. This is absolutely amazing. And so I think the benefits are, are just kind of self-evident there. Uh, but what about, you know, my high schooler, he's, he's 14, he's 15, he's 16 years old. What if my kid doesn't know the path that he or she wants to take. Sure. So that's where our academic coaches are really helpful, our college and career counselors, and kids just trying out classes, right? They may take a photo class to satisfy an art credit, a fine art credit, just to get their graduation box picked, and then realize they really love photography. Um, yeah. Or they may try out consumer math. So that they can get real world skills in, in how to balance budgets and things like that and then realize, hey, I might want to start my own business. Let me try out this entrepreneurship class. So it starts out with them just taking a look through our catalog and getting the support of our team so that we can help them figure out what they want to try out. And then from there, they get to grow and step into more classes. We just want to make sure that we have as many opportunities as possible for them to develop their interests as they come up. And they do, right? Like yeah. they might try a class and be like, nope, that wasn't my jam. Um, but then try something else and, and, it, and it really fits. So we want them to be able to grow that process. I love that because I had a friend um, who actually had that experience but he wasn't afforded the opportunity to have that experience in high school, right? And he, his whole life, he wanted to be a teacher. And, and so he, he studied, worked hard, went to college to be a teacher, got his credential, and then taught for a year and realized, no, this isn't for me. And ended up, you know, spending all that time and money and then leaving the profession and going into a totally different profession. This is an opportunity for your, your child to do this, your teenager to do this and, and discover what they are passionate about or maybe what they aren't in fact passionate about before they get into like the more high stakes uh, you know declaring a major in college or you know uh, getting a certificate or, or even starting a career that is fantastic Kate, i'm looking exactly. here on on your catalog you've also got a class that's new this year called get lit um yeah i know my brother he's chuckling right now as he's listening but what is get lit what are you offering 
So Get Lit is, um, they offer incredible, we're partnering with them um, for our Track C summer months, and they offer incredible courses in spoken word poetry. So they use poetry and creative writing as a vehicle for learning about history and English. So for those kids that are really into writing and poems and doing their own spoken word poetry, this is a way for them to tap into that interest and then still get um, their English credits met. So these classes are approved as electives and for high school and English courses. Wow. So whether it's an elective or a fully accredited English course, it's kind of like a poetry slam class. Exactly. Yep. That is really cool. Um, so, Kate, I, I can't help but think folks are wondering how do they how do they enroll? How do they enroll at iLead Online? You mentioned it before, but I think we need to underline it. How do folks enroll, and how much does it cost? Sure. So, all you have to do is go to iLeadOnline.org, and you're going to click the Enroll Now button, and it'll take you through a step by step process so that you can walk right through the enrollment process. Um, if, or you always have the option to go again to iLeadOnline.org and click the contact us and send us an email letting us know that you're interested in more information um, and we'll go ahead and get you started and answer all of your questions. And so is that and process... It's, free. It, it's absolutely free for learners who live in the counties that we serve. Um, although kids always have the option, regular year, track C, to purchase our classes um, a la carte if they choose, right? Say they're going to their regular high school during the year, but they want to take um, AP literature, right? Or AP calculus and they can't fit it in their schedule. They can always purchase that from us if they want um, part-time. That's always an option as well. Interesting. So yeah, because I was going to ask you if it's a free public charter school, why would people pay? Um, we You can't enroll in two public schools at the same time, but just like, uh, you know, if you were to take a uh, an extra tutoring class if you know your your traditional high school offers French and Spanish but you want to take German you could you could pay to take a class you guys offer that kind of vein as well any of your Absolutely. courses can be purchased by someone who's attending another school or you know they can drop that zero and get with this hero as they uh, so to speak and join you full time and, and that's all all free right Exactly. Yeah. And that often happens. We have an incredible Japanese program and that's not a course that every school offers. So we get lots of kids who, for example, take Japanese with us um, part time, but are enrolled in um, their their other school. But yes, yeah, free of charge um, for learners to enroll with us full time. Fantastic. And I know uh, at that informational night you had just the other day, there were a lot of families that were talking about doing that. They were like, you know what? Track C sounds great, but I I'm, I'm not enrolling in Track C full time. I just want to take this one class. How can I pay? And it's 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 really not that expensive. Your prices are on your on your website, iLeadOnline.org. Online and, uh, you know, their, their, their son just wanted to take something that... Uh, that excited him, that he was passionate about, that uh, that he didn't necessarily have time to explore during the uh, the regular school year, and so he's going to do that over the summer months. So again, so you've <laughs> got all these different things that you're doing, Kate. You've got Track C that starts up July not first, July third for kids that want to get ahead or need to get caught up or just want to be engaged and avoid that learning loss of the summertime. Um, you've got all these career and technical education pathways preparing kids for their future careers. Um, and, and gosh, you're doing it all with a tremendous amount of support. We talked about how every class has its teacher, just like, you know, if you're in the elementary age, you've got your teacher that teaches all your subjects. If you're in middle and high school, you've got that subject area expert in every single subject. You also have coaches. But Kate, you've got some other team members that are out there really supporting your kids, making sure that they are having, that all their academic and social emotional needs are being met. Um, talk to us about your your counselors and your intervention specialists, folks that kind of really do make sure that your arms are thrown all the way around your students. Sure, so we have a full team of um, special education instructors who support our kiddos who have IEPs. We also have um, intervention specialist who works with all of our learners who may need a little bit of extra support. They collaborate with the coaches um, and our course instructors to make sure that we're customizing content and we're differentiating. We're doing all of the things that 
we need to do to help kids succeed. And then we have a college and career high school um, counselor who helps with all things post high school career preparation. Um, so we really do, each kid really does get the support of a full team um, that, that, that helps them succeed in their, in their learning journey. Okay, so as I just wanna make sure that this is fully laid out there. As a student at your school, I lead online traditional, or I'm sorry, a, a free public charter school, no tuition involved. As a student at your school, I have all of my teachers that I would normally have. On top of that, I have an academic coach. On top of that, I have my high school counselor who's gonna make sure that I'm on track to, uh, to follow whatever path it is that's laid out before me, whether that's college, career, military, et cetera. You've also got tutors, free tutors, that your, your students have access to. It's no wonder the, the high schoolers that I used to work with would tell me, I'm getting more support at iLead Online than I've ever gotten in any of my, my school experience. Kate, this is, this is phenomenal. Now, the one downside I'm thinking is there's no opportunity to meet up with my classmates, right? Because everything's done online. I'm lying, aren't I, Kate? I know for a fact. I've seen some emails coming across my desk. You've got kids meeting up and doing fun things. There's a beach day coming up for your students? Yeah, we're super excited. So we listen to our kids and we set up celebrations throughout the year, activities throughout the year for our community to connect, um, both virtually and in-person options. So we do um, virtual kind of festival events where we hold um, crafts and learning opportunities online, but we also have um, park days. We have our end of the year beach bash coming up. Um, our high school learners participate in prom and grad night. Nice. So we have all of those things as well. In addition, we have active parent groups that do field trips. Um, so we're really happy to be able to provide those in-person opportunities as well as an option for kids. You're absolutely right. I think your high schoolers also went roller skating down in Northridge uh, earlier this year. And, and you're right about your parents. I've, I've actually had occasion to interact with some of them. They are very involved in what's going on at their school, I Lead Online. So one more time, Kate, I Lead Online, TK through 12th grade, it's a free public charter school paid for by your tax dollars. So no, no tuition involved. You've got Traxy, which are courses that start in the summer that, that folks can take advantage of, whether they're fully enrolled now or they just wanna do that during July and, uh, or June and July. Um, no, not June and July, July. July and August. July yes, and they August. They can take one or two classes. Yeah. Um, in July and August, enroll with us full time, free of charge. And and then stick it out through the the full year, or they can head back to the the school that they've been working in August through uh, through May. Um, and then one last time, Kate, your website is iLeadOnline.org. Fantastic, Kate Wolf, director of iLead Online Charter School. Check them out at iLeadOnline.org. If you're convinced, just smash that enroll now button, or you can get more information with without any commitment at all. You can explore our classes, take a look at the catalog. Their extensive catalog is on the website as well. Kate, thank you so much for joining us. I, I, I appreciate it. You have a wonderful long weekend, and we'll see you soon. Thank you for having me. I am Matt Watson. You're listening to SCVI and I lead school's Eye on the Valley. We'll be right back on your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. I am Matt Watson, your host, and you're listening to SCVI and I lead school's Eye on the Valley. Hey, do you like history? You know, I'm a big history buff, and sometimes what I like to do is just peruse the historical calendar to, to see what happened on this date in history. And I'm looking right now, and, and we've got vampires and cowboys on this date in history. So let's take a look. Uh, today is Friday, May 26th, and on this date in 1897, Dracula goes on sale in London. The first copies of the classic vampire novel Dracula by Irish writer Bram Stoker appeared in London bookshops on this day in 1897. A childhood invalid, Stoker actually grew up to become a soccer star at Trinity College in Dublin. After graduation, he got a job in civil service at Dublin Castle where he worked for the next 10 years while writing drama reviews for the Dublin Mail on the side. In this way, Stoker met the well-respected actor Sir Henry Irving, who hired him as his manager. Stoker stayed in the post for 
uh, most of the next three decades writing Irving's voluminous uh, correspondence for him and accompanying him on tours in the United States. Over the years, Stoker began writing a number of horror stories for magazines, and in 1890, he published his first novel, The Snake's Pass. Stoker would go on to publish 17 novels in all, but it was his 1897 novel, Dracula, that eventually earned him literary fame and became known as a masterpiece of Victorian-era Gothic literature. On this date in 1927, Henry Ford and his son Edsel... Yeah, yeah, he named the car after his kid. Uh, they drove the 15 millionth Model T Ford out of their factory, marking the famous automobile's official last day of production. The Model T helped democratize the automobile, if you will, and set the standard for American industry and production. On this day in 1868, President Johnson was acquitted. At the end of an historic two-month trial, the U.S. Senate narrowly failed to convict President Andrew Johnson, who became president after Abe Lincoln was assassinated. That's Abe Lincoln as in President Abraham Lincoln, not Abe Lincoln as in current Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Call back to last week's show. Anyways, the U.S. Senate narrowly failed to convict President Andrew Johnson of the impeachment charges levied against him by the House of Representatives three months earlier. The senators voted 35 guilty and 19 not guilty on the second article of impeachment, a charge related to his violation of the Tenure of Office Act in the previous year. Ten days earlier, the Senate had likewise failed to convict Johnson on another article of impeachment, the 11th, voting an identical 35 for conviction and 19 for acquittal. Now, Matt, you're going to say that that's more conviction than acquittal, but because both votes fell short by one vote of the two-thirds majority required to convict Johnson, he was judged not guilty and remained in office. Yeah, first time we ever had a president uh, impeached. Not the last time, as you know. On this date in 1864, yes, just four years prior to Johnson's exoneration, the Montana Territory was created. Uh, um, anxious to create new free territories during the Civil War, U.S. President Abraham Lincoln, yes, that Abe Lincoln, signed an act establishing the Montana Territory. However, Montana was uh, on the unstable frontier, and it did little to add to the integrity of the Union, and uh, we quickly spir spiraled into a, a deeper war. And happy birthday to John Wayne. That's right. May 26, 1907, John Wayne, the actor who came to epitomize the American West, was born in Winterset, Iowa. Born Marion Robert Morrison, Wayne's family moved to Glendale, California, where when he was six years old, he began to deliver newspapers. He he went on to, uh, to be a football star at USC, and then he... Uh, he got work uh, due to his his mentor, John Ford. He got work on movie sets as an extra where he met Wyatt Earp and he started to mimic the moves and, and the stylings of of the legendary, legendary lawman of the West. And then, you know, of course, we all know that John Wayne went on to become the iconic star of Western film. So that is it. That is Today in History, May 26th. When we get back, what's up at the main? Uh, we will be talking with Jeff Barber from the Maine in downtown Newhall. I'm Matt Watson. You're listening to SCBI and I lead schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, your host, and you are listening to SCBI and I lead schools Eye on the Valley. We're coming to you live from the center of Main Street here in beautiful downtown Newhall. And my next guest is also joining me live in the studio. We always appreciate it when a guest can come in. He is a busy guy. Jeff Barber is the arts and events supervisor for the city of Santa Clarita and the manager of the main, which is the theater space that the city operates here on Main Street, just up the block from the, uh, the radio station here. Jeff Barber is a SoCal native, born and raised in Simi Valley. He's a fourth generation drummer who, I mean, drummers are always the coolest ones anyways, but he's also got the coolest nickname in the world. We may have a chance to get to that a little bit later. Jeff, thanks for coming back to Eye on the Valley. Thanks, Matt. We always love having you in. You know, you're one of my favorite guests. Um, for our listeners who, who may have missed your previous visits, can you tell us what your role at the city of Santa Clarita is? 
Sure. Uh, currently, it's uh, the manager of the main theater. Uh, I started out my career 15 years ago, actually, on May 19th. Oh, uh, wow. So it's been 15 years. It's, it's Happy anniversary. gone really quickly. Uh, I was uh, originally doing the public art program for the city, mm -hmm. uh, large-scale public art program, and the various exhibits that are around town as well. I started those and did a few events as well, like the Earth Arbor Day Festival and those. And then uh, transitioned into uh, managing the main uh, just before COVID, so in uh, like 2018. December, November, and then boom. And then boom, you got shut down. <laughs> Um, we, you know, we may get into that when uh, when things got shut down because y'all didn't stop, which we I thought not. was uh, it was really cool. But uh, tell our listeners about the main a little bit. Um, so, is this something that you're you're moonlighting, or is this something that the city operates? Uh, tell us about the the theater. So uh, the uh, theater prior to the city taking it over was being run. Uh, it was called the Rep East Playhouse. And uh, that was kind of coming to its end, and the city really uh, values the arts, and especially yeah. down here in Old Town Newhall. Sure. Uh, and so we didn't want that theater to disappear, so we made arrangements with the property owner and, and started uh, paying uh, the uh, rent for that space and uh, started activating it with a variety of things, uh, theater, uh, various comedy shows that we've been doing the society improv has been there for years and uh, they're still doing that every other month uh so we started uh programming um full theater live theater uh productions full season of that uh, we started doing a program called note by note which was a music program and then 10 by 10 which is a variety show that yeah. i've been doing uh for about eight years now i guess the city's been uh Doing stuff at the at the main for about um, maybe eight nine years. Okay. Uh, while it was still the rep, we were doing programming, and then we mm -hmm. transitioned to being the sole uh, um, manager of that space, and uh, it's been great. Fantastic. Um, so you talked about some of the different uh, uh, programming offers uh, offerings at the main. Um, it, it's kind of a unique venue. So what does having a performance venue like the main offer our residents? Oh, it is awesome. It's an 81-seat theater, so very uh, small, intimate space, which is, number one, the cool, cool thing. Yeah, no uh, bad seat in the house. No. Yeah. Uh, so then, uh, number two, we uh, fill it with all sorts of things all year. We have a full theater season of live plays. Uh, currently, we have the Explorers Club. It's their last weekend through Olive Branch okay. Theatricals. And then the next one coming up by Hope Theater Arts is called The Book Women. Uh, but we have plays all the way through December. Um, Typically two plays a month, uh, meaning uh, run productions of, of two different kinds sure. of plays, and they'll do uh, two weekend runs or one weekend runs. Uh, we have the 10 by 10 variety show. Like I said, it's uh, 10 acts doing 10 minutes of performance. Uh, so I always say, if you don't like what's on stage, it's going to be gone in 10 <laughs> minutes. Wait a minute, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. So let, let's pause right there. How yeah. does how does that work? You just cranking in different performers of, of completely different genres, or is it all like? Like comedians, we have 10 comedians coming on. Or... Oh, yeah, we do everything. Um, everything from storytelling to music, dance to juggling, magic to comedy. I, there's everything. We, wow. You know, we've had uh, ventriloquist dummies. Okay. Uh, we've had, again, jugglers, musicians, dancers. Uh, so it's 10 minutes and we try to mix it up. So there's a lot of variety going on. Perfect. And, yeah, it's a really fun event. Ed Sullivan would be proud. So oh, yeah, and it's free, which so, is great. It's the okay, first. Okay, so back that up. Yeah. So the ten by ten is completely free. Completely free. Just... Thir first Thursday of uh, every month. Okay. Uh, actually, was on a trip uh, to China, and while I was gone, the arts and events department, which I'm part of, uh -huh. um, started figuring out how they're going to activate the space, the main. Right. And uh, so they, one of them, someone came up with the idea of this 10 by 10. I was not in the room and I got back from vacation and they were like, there's a new event at the, at the rep or the main and uh, you're going to be doing it. And it's called 10 by 10. Right. <laughs> Go. By the way, while you were on vacation, we had this great idea for you to do. That's always nice to be voluntold. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it, though. It's really, uh, my, I was the kid in on my block that would set up chairs, and my sister and I would create a show in the summertime. And so now okay. I manage an actual space 
uh, for the latter part of my career. I, I, I absolutely love it. Um, and then it, it's the space is used for more than just live performances, right? I, I often see art shows uh, advertised on your social media. What other things do you do at the main? Yes, we have a different art show every month. And then on the third Thursday is an art reception that's free as well with uh, light refreshments and then the art and typically we'll have live music as well. Um, they're pretty uh, exciting when the census is going on, the census uh, street yeah. party, because then you'll have the big stage outside and we have our doors open and we'll see 300 people come in for the reception and using our restrooms too. <laughs> Well, that's always very important. <laughs> so, gosh, you guys are really, really nimble. So I love that. But the sense is, for those of you that don't know, is is just this huge, amazing block party that we have uh, once a month yep. uh, down here in, in downtown Newhall where the streets are closed off here on Main Street. And, and, and you just kind of it, – it's kind of like the, the main spills out – senses spills in, in yep. and uh and you all completely participate in in that event you also offer your venue um uh for rent you, you you've got people that put on their own shows they can now it's not easy to get a spot from what i understand but it is not uh that is a, a good problem to have i guess oh sure that we're so busy um we have a lot of creative people working at the main and uh, we always have uh ideas and we find space uh but yes there are rentals uh available uh for instance we have nick rail music coming in oh. uh at the end of this month may 30th um doing a whole afternoon evening of recitals for mm -hmm. some of their students so they've rented space and they're doing that and but it is uh far uh i can't think of that phrase uh few and far between open dates sure sure yeah unfortunately it, but yeah, it's kind of that uh, fortunate misfortune, right? Yes. You guys have got such great programming going on and with all the different events that you're able to, to get involved in, um, it doesn't leave a whole lot of windows for open space. Uh, again, like you said, good problem to have. It's yep. good to know that uh, that the main is, is as popular as ever and uh, and you can only afford to, to leave some open windows for folks to come in and yes. do that. But but yeah, if you've got a band that's uh, that's coming together or maybe you've written an independent production and, and you just need a venue to put it on, you, you give them a shot. You might be able to, to, to find a, a venue. Yes. Now, I mentioned uh, we, we talked about COVID, right? And um, it's funny. Uh, we actually went from doing, you know, we do our Friday morning show. We went from doing one day a week to doing five days a week uh, during the pandemic ourselves. And I was fascinated by watching people, businesses, organizations, groups, and their response to, and I'm doing the air quotes for those of you that are listening on the radio, um, the shutdown, right? We shut down. And, and I watched successful large businesses say, oh, COVID, shut down. We can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And then I also watched, you know, other folks, whether it was individuals, uh, businesses, organizations, like I said, uh, pivot. And I know the word became cliche during during COVID, but they, they, they didn't ask can we or can't we? They said, how can we? And, and yep. you know, uh, restaurants come to mind, right? We can't open our dining room. So let's push out onto the sidewalks, yes. onto the streets, things like that. Right. One of my favorite stories uh, was a guy by the name of Graham Silver. He's a DJ, right? If anybody had the right to say, can't do anything during COVID, it's, it's a DJ, right? Because weddings were being canceled, bar mitzvahs, you know, all the prom, nobody had prom in 2020, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But he said, no, I'm throwing my equipment in the back of my Jeep. I'm going to go park it at the end of a cul-de-sac, crank up the tunes and and host, you know, little block parties for kids and things like that. Get people out into their driveways. And and so entire neighborhoods were in their driveways, partying, dancing, having a great time. And, and, right. You talk about a pivot. Yeah. Y'all at the main did something similar. Right. It, it, I was fascinated because y'all didn't just kind of grit your teeth and survive the pandemic. Um, now, let's talk about and I don't want to criticize anybody but like Broadway right people lost their jobs and it was this horrible thing y'all actually grew your influence you grew your circle to go international during COVID tell us what you we guys did, did. Um, about two weeks into being at home and I was thinking I I gotta do something mm -hmm. and so I thought what if for 10 by 10 what if we had acts shoot themselves you know f f um, film themselves doing a 10 minute set 
and then <clears throat> excuse me they'll send that to one of our staff and they'll edit it together and then we'll put it online uh -huh. and so within two weeks of being uh, at home not doing anything I'm like, i gotta do something <laughs> so i was like can we do this and so we thought yeah we could probably do this and so we started doing 10 by 10 virtually and having uh every month and actually the first couple of months we did it like every thursday which was ridiculous oh but uh, people needed it so yes yeah uh but then we scaled it back to uh, once a month but it was uh virtual we had um an international like you had mentioned an international 10 by 10 where because that opened it up i don't yeah. have to have someone come to the main and perform we can have someone um, and we had a magician from spain nice. uh, a uh, comedian magician from iceland uh, there was a dancer from Egypt, belly dancer from Egypt. So we did a, an international. Uh, we had uh, a rockabilly band from Russia that was, that performed. Uh, we had this um, kind of, um, I don't know, performance art guy from Japan um, send in a video. So it was uh, it was really fun. I thought it was uh, it was really fun to do that. Um, just the whole thing. I, it was a lot of work, uh -huh. um, but it was it was worth it. And then. Additionally, and I still talk about this, is uh, one of my staff and I, uh, Sean Hughes and I, we were brainstorming again like antsy creative people, and we created a cooking show. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we, again, we worked with uh, Feed SCV, All and right. they did like the main dish. Okay. And uh, they shot a, a piece that was like 20, 25 minutes long with this main recipe. Then we had some local independent, like just um, amateur chef, uh -huh. they would put together a dish. And then we had this pastry chef that we worked with as well. So we did this whole show called Food Sessions uh -huh. that we created during COVID. We also, uh, one of my staff um, who's in the theater world, started a, uh, a live like theater presentation production online. And I think they did um, War of the Worlds. And it was really oh, cool. Wow. And then I thought, hey, we could do that too. Uh -huh. She did this completely not through the main or through the city or anything. She's okay. part-time staff, but she is just passionate about theater and, and mm -hmm. did it. And I thought, well, we could do We could try that and see. And we had a bunch of productions, um, again, internationally as well. We had productions from China and Korea, um, Hungary, um, Ireland. Wow. So we just yeah, wow. we were, we had a, actually had a ball during that time. It was, there was a lot of pressure with all the <laughs> video bet. editing and talking to people and stuff, but also all these creative people were really into it as well because they were getting to do something creative while they were sitting in their house. Yeah, when, when again, some might think, oh, I, I'm a magician, I can't perform. Now they're not just performing, but expanding their, their audience. Yes. And, and speaking of expanding an audience, you're an 81 seat theater, but during the pandemic, those limitations got thrown off. Y'all were getting hundreds of people coming on. Yes, thousands actually. In some cases, oh, wow. um, we uh, I think in the the end numbers that we uh, we uh, calculated was about forty four thousand people watched wow. some of our pieces over a six month period. Incredible. Yeah, because we couldn't have gotten close to that with eighty one seats, right? Sure. So that was that was fun to be able to expand uh, internationally. Really. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that is absolutely beautiful, and you haven't slowed down. I'm looking. You brought all this information I did. in for for me to look at, and for you, me to look at. You've too. got tons <laughs> of stuff going on at the main, and I want to get into it. But what I want to do is just kind of be able to to spread this out on the countertop, talk about all the different things yep. uh, going on. So we'll do that in just a second. But before we do, um, even though we haven't talked about everything that's happening yet, we will. Um, how do folks get tickets? Uh, for, you said 10 by 10 is free. It is. Not all of your 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 acts, your your performances are free. So how do folks get tickets? Do they need to reserve them or is it just first come, first serve, walk up? Uh, it's at themain.org is the website. And um, yes, most everything uh, is a ticketed event. Uh -huh. uh, seating is first come, first serve. You can buy a ticket and okay. then seat wherever you want to. We typically open our house about a half hour before a show starts. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so at the main.org. At the main.org, they can get tickets and, and, and peruse all the different shows that we're yep. going to talk about in just a little bit. Um, you said first Thursday is the 10 by 10. Um, gosh, date night just kind of writes itself here in, in, in New Hall on a Thursday night. Um, do I need to still get a ticket for the 10 by 10? 
No, no. That one's just a walk on in yeah. on a Thursday night. Fantastic. All right, Jeff, we're going to talk all about this when we get back. We're going to take a quick break. Um, but when we get back, we're going to we're gonna hear everything that Jeff Barber, manager of the Maine and Newhall, has got going on for world-class theater right here in downtown Newhall. I'm Matt Watson. You're listening to SCVI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI. CVI and I lead school's eye on the valley. I am your host, Matt Watson, and I'm joined this morning by Jeff Barber, your main man. That's right. He is the general manager of the main. You probably get that all the time, don't you? Never have, actually. Oh, so well. right on. <laughs> Why would somebody call you the main man when you've got a nickname like six? I mean, you're a drummer. Your nickname is six. That is so dope. Well, maybe we'll get into that in just a second. Okay. But but what we have to talk about is all the amazing Offerings. So I do love 10 by 10. And so I kept talking about that in the first break. But let's talk about everything that you've got going on. What have you got showing right now at the main? Uh, so that's the Explorers Club. Um, and that is uh, the last weekend is this weekend. So tonight, tomorrow and Sunday. Uh, that's through Olive Branch Theatricals. Uh, it's the best set I've ever seen in the main. They, they just the bar uh-huh. is so high. It's it's an amazing set. Uh, if you have time afterwards, come over and uh, knock on the door and All we'll right. uh, show it to you. It's pretty amazing. Uh, so that uh, runs through this weekend. And then the next production is right. The Book Women, and that's uh, through Hope Theater Arts. And uh, that one starts in uh, uh, June 6th. And um, that is about during the Depression era. Mm-hmm. It was a group of women that would bring books and magazines and things out to people in rural America and share um, knowledge and, and give them things to read and all of that. And so the play is based on that that uh, idea of those those women, the book women. Fantastic. So they're yeah. br- bringing books out to, to the very rural areas in the 1930s, yep. um, throwing things in their car? No. <laughs> On They're horseback. Doing it on horseback. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. We're going to have to talk to Shannon Vonnegut down at the Santa Clarita Library and see if we can get some more horses involved in our public go. libraries and, <laughs> and see if we can't try to book out to you from time to time. Fantastic. So so you've got the Explorers Club uh, wrapping up this weekend. Yep. So are tickets still available? Or you sold they out are. for that. Okay. Yep. Okay. So again, at the main dot org. org. At the main dot org, folks can get tickets for this weekend show. The, the Explorers Club, um, interesting. You said best set design you, you've oh, seen in 15 years. Fantastic. And then the book women, that sounds really interesting. Uh, librarians on horseback delivering books in the, in the Depression. Uh, that's going to be opening soon. What else is coming up? That, that you got? What isn't uh, There's a lot. So uh, June 2nd, we have a show. Uh, it's through our Locals Only Music Series, which is uh, a series that we started uh, last year. And it features only bands in Santa Clarita Valley. Okay. And so we've done a uh, variety of genres. So the one coming up here on June 2nd is an 80s night. Nice. And we're encouraging people to dress up in 80s garb. There we uh, go. For that night. And then uh, there'll be a prize for the... Uh, best costumes or best um fashion 80s fashion all right and uh, so that's june 2nd and, that is june uh, 2nd it's locals only music night 80s music yep uh, folks don't have to come but you come on get dressed up yeah, yeah if you have something or you know go to a and, <laughs> goodwill's got all of your yes, 80s fashion exactly um and, and you said there's a prize for for best 80s look yep you know you may as well give it to my brother now big t's gonna roll in oh, with yeah. his, his z cavaricis <laughs> and his white trench coat <laughs> he may have a little bit of eyeliner you know there's gonna be some aquanet going on <laughs> absolutely you know big t and frogger we can do the 80s right absolutely again uh, june 2nd 7 p.m yep. locals only yep. tickets 15 dollars right. uh there's uh an opening act, and then uh, Tommy Peacock, who's a local musician, is going to be All playing right. a set, and then members only will be doing the uh, the main set there. Members only, I, I like it after mm-hmm. the jacket that mm-hmm. uh, that I was rocking back in the eighties. Right? All right, very <laughs> cool. All right, so that's locals only, June second. What yep. else is coming up? Uh, and then on June tenth, uh, we did uh, now and again we have open space uh, at the right. theater, and um, Kazu Kasani. Uh, uh, Japanese American comedian said, "Hey, I have this one-woman show I did at the Fringe Festival. Would love to do it. 
um, at the main. Do you have an opening? June 10th happened to be open, uh, and we're like, yeah, let's do it. So Pretty Beast is uh, on June 10th, and uh, it's a one-woman show. It's uh, she's a hilarious woman. She's been on Ten by Ten a few times. All right. And uh, yeah, so that's coming up on June tenth. Well, and she's got uh, your your flyer here. She's got all kinds of awards. Uh, Pick of the Vancouver Fringe, twenty nineteen, Best of Fest at the what is it? The Crazy Woke Asians Solo Festival, twenty nineteen, uh, Best of Fest San Francisco Fringe, Stand Up Acts Out. Uh, Jenny Award winner, she's got to be pretty good. I'm she's thinking. got some cred for sure, and uh, she's just pleasant person to work with as well. She's really funny too. Okay, San Francisco Chronicle called her a consummate storyteller, and, and yeah. then if she can make it funny, fantastic. Pretty Beast singles a bold and important new voice in the comedy and theater. Gosh, okay. Now I'm just reading your, your literature on the air. <laughs> Raised in Japan by a schizophrenic mother and distant alcoholic father, Kazu dreams of escape. She discovers humor as a shield to survive and battle sexist and gender stereotypes. Incredible. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Uh, one more time. That's June 10th. June 10th. Yeah. So this is all coming right on top of each other. You've got uh, you've got the Explorers Club closing this weekend. You've got the book women coming up, followed by Locals Only June 2nd. Uh, you've got Kazu Kusano, uh, the comedian, on June 10th. Gosh, do, do you ever get a vacation? Do you ever t- – well, I, we heard what happened when you go on vacation. They give you more I work. I get more work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it, you've got more here. And what else is happening? Lastly, uh, I guess, uh, is the uh, – we, we've been doing this series called Enchanted, and um, they're thematic kind of nights of – mentalism or magic we did a circus theme one last year uh, we're working on a uh, a couple more for this year june 30th is the next one it's uh, enchanted the mystery of mentalism which is in essence mind reading and uh, right. we've done this uh, two times before uh, over the last uh, year and a half and <clears throat> completely sold out and uh, so this one is june 30th tickets are still available for that one it's eight o'clock and uh, fifteen dollars, so it's uh, fairly uh, low fee. And yeah, uh, yeah, they're really really cool evenings. Um, and uh, seeing a mentalist live and having them uh, do what they do is pretty incredible. It's just a, it's, my mouth was uh, I just dropped one one of our shows. Uh, he was so accurate with this woman that yeah. he called out of the audience. Uh-huh. Her friends who were sitting down next to her were like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> and she was just like, oh, my God. She actually started weeping. Uh, not yeah. to, you know, advocate for that, but uh, it was just <laughs> the, the, yeah, I, I don't know how they do that, but it's really interesting and definitely entertaining. And you just, yeah, it just. You're absolutely right. I, you know, um, I've always been a fan of magic, especially close-up magic. Um, but what I like to do with magicians is, is kind of probably what everybody likes to do. Try to figure it out, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's palming the card. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, he, he saw what you did when you... Or, you know, oh, he had an accomplice. That, that guy's not a waiter. He stuck the thing under the chair. And, and But I still love it. Mentalism is something different. Um, I actually had a mentalist in one day who who did some stuff. Who I had I worked with him for a little while, um, and they they pick up on stuff. It, it's not uh-huh. magic tricks. It, it, it's not um, you know just giving you enough information where they can you know throw out something that I see somebody angry in your life and you go yeah no it's not that mm-hmm. these are people that pick up on the subtlest things that uh, that we do as humans to gain absolutely incredible insight it's scarier yes. than the internet it is it is <laughs> um, but it, it like you said it, it's absolutely fascinating and and they get into detail and um, and, and they will blow you away and to do something like that in an 81 seat theater, yes. it, it's and not, live. oh, that yeah. guy that I can barely see way up in the front row got a uh-huh. great show. No, everybody. So again, mm-hmm. this is Enchanted, The Mystery of Mentalism. Um, June 30th. All right. And, and is this, Jeff, is that the mentalist that you've got coming in? Uh, yes, that's actually a picture of um, Madame Zola. Okay. And uh, she's uh, working with her partner, the master. Oh, I uh, see. I see. Madame Zola is uh, 
probably a, a significant portion of the show. Uh-huh. I can tell just by looking at her picture here. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we're a school-based radio show, Jeff, so I'm going to stop there. Uh, <laughs> um, so that is fantastic. It, again, you can hardly get a, a hamburger for $18 anymore. But general admission tickets are 18 bucks uh, for the mystery of mentalism at the main. And I'm scanning, scanning June 30th. June 30th. So you've got all this stuff coming up in oh, the next month. Constant, yes. There's a one. There's comedy. There's music. There's magic. Uh, and then there's theater, live theater too. So there's always something happening. <laughs> Producer Sarah is poking fun at me because I'm holding these brochures, you know, because my arms are almost <laughs> long enough to where I can read this. Um, I understand. Yeah. So you've got, how do you manage all this? Because you, you've got a show, elaborate show, closing this weekend. You've got another one opening right after that. You, you've got locals only, 80s music, and, and, and a comedian, and a mentalist, and, and all within the next month. How do, you, how do you manage all this stuff? Not to mention the 10 by 10 on, on you know, the first Thursdays. Yes, and the art receptions and the, all the that, The art too. reception. Um, you've got so much going on. Please. Well, I've been doing events for a long time, so I can juggle a lot. All right. Um, but also, uh, I have great staff as well that uh, work on some of these. Uh, Jessica Gonzalez is a, a part-time staff member at the Maine, and she's right. in charge of locals only. Um, okay. I'll do oh, cool. some of the uh, some of the stuff like contracts and stuff, but mm-hmm. she's uh, working with the acts and figuring mm-hmm. out the lineup and how they're going to schedule everything. Uh, the productions are actually fairly easy. We do an agreement with them, and then they come and in they and. Do. They set up, right. do their set, and uh, they've all, most of them have been at the main before, so they kind of know the score as far as what's allowed, what's not allowed, and, and all of that, and we have okay. good working relationships. So it's, yeah, like very effective staff, right. and um, a lot of folks that have already worked with us, and they know they know what to do and what not to do. Fantastic, and, and producer Sarah said it, but you guys just set the stage for a perfect Thursday night date night, um, and you're set in the absolute perfect location right here at the center of main street in new yep. hall uh, across the street down the street around the corner from the best restaurants in the world yes right so uh so yeah come uh, grab an early dinner and, and catch a show a concert a, a mentalist a comedian or um gosh you've got uh, you know weekend shows matinees and then you can go to to lunch or dinner just you know what? Go to their website at the and, and and check out everything that they've got going on. You're going to want to come back. Jeff, you say that this weekend show, the Explorers Club, just looking at the, the set is worth the price of admission. The set alone, the acting could be horrible, but the set, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> okay. It's actually fantastic. Okay. My boss, who's a very big critic, uh, okay. Phil Lantis, he oh. said the, the play is amazing. All right. And he's a big critic. So the acting is awesome and the set is amazing. All right, all right. So absolutely, come down and and check it out if you if you've got the time this weekend, and if you don't have time this weekend, you, you better get online, get tickets to all Some these the other, other things. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And speaking of, not to interrupt you, real no, quick, please. Speaking of date night at the main, that is going to be a, a July kind of marketing push for us. We oh. have postcards that say date night at the main. Uh, there'll be bus shelter posters around town, uh, date night at the main, and uh, so we're trying to push that that idea of like come down here, have dinner. Yeah, or uh-huh. a drink before, and go uh, go to a show, and or you can go to show, have lunch, and go to a show, a matinee or whatever. So there is that kind of, we are a place where you can come and have take a date and have a good time, and and it's relatively cheap. Yeah, you know, before we started, uh, you and I were talking about uh, uh, your and I's uh, corresponding um, significant others, and so definitely, I will, I will see you there, probably okay. on a Thursday night, and, and maybe on a weekend here, real soon. Now, Jeff, earlier on, I mentioned, uh, you know, your cool just gets cooler and cooler, right? It, you've been a musician for a long time, fourth generation drummer. Yes. Uh, are you actively part of a band? Are you? I am. I was last time we spoke. I was in two bands, but now I'm. Um, I'm in one band now, and right. it's a, a social distortion tribute band. So that's <sighs> a punk band from like the yeah. late seventies, early eighties. Yeah. <clears throat> and if folks don't recognize the name, they recognize the skeleton with the martini. Yes. Uh, kind of ska dance on there on the chain. Yeah. Yeah. Stars, yeah. So. Everybody loves. Some so yeah, I, uh, I'm uh, been I've been with them for a couple of years now, and uh, we know, gosh, like four hours worth of social distortion Whoa. music. Whoa! So about sixty songs we know. Nice. I know. Fantastic. And 
and they call you six, right? That's your friends call you six. They do. As a drummer, it doesn't get much cooler than that. <laughs> um, the way you got the name is kind of quirky, though. Uh, can you share with our, our listeners how you got to be called six? Yes. Uh, so, gosh, this would be about 25 years ago. I lived in Hollywood and I uh, lived in this studio apartment in Hollywood off of uh, Vermont. And uh, I was at 7-Eleven just up the street and All gave right. some money to a homeless person. Uh, you know, like 10 bucks because I was just feeling I don't do that all the time or anything, but thought I would uh, just be a little generous. And so I did that. And then that was like, I don't know, it was maybe on a Sunday or Monday or something like that. Uh -huh. Wednesday or Thursday at about four in the morning, I hear something and I, I woke up and I'm like, what is that? And then I realized it's someone yelling my apartment number, which was number six, <laughs> at, up at my window at four o'clock in the morning. Right. And I wake up and I'm like, what is that? And so this person was asking if, you know, I opened my window and they were asking if I could give them some more money. So you they must have followed me generosity home. generosity in the past. Yeah, which is a little scary, by the way. A little, yeah. yeah. And then I thought probably all my, you know, neighbors think I deal drugs or something. <laughs> six, <laughs> hey, I need six. <laughs> So uh, my friend at the time, uh, he I have a lot of wacky things that had happened to me right. prior to that. Sure. Just wacky things. Um, and he's like, oh, my gosh, this what this crazy stuff always happens to you. I'm going to start calling you number six. All right. And then it just stuck. And now it's just six. And uh, my fiance refuses to call me six. Um, <laughs> but my bandmates and a lot of friends still call me six after 25 years. I love I it. embrace it. Absolutely love it. And I love that, you know, you two can get a cool nickname just by being generous and 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 kind hearted. Now, Jeff Barber manages the main here in downtown Newhall, putting on some of the finest shows and most entertaining uh, opportunities for a great date night or a wonderful weekend uh, for you. Again, the main here in downtown Newhall at themain.org. Um, Jeff, do you like trivia? I uh, I like history and All right. trivia, but I'm horrible at it. But I, again, will give a shot like I did last time. All right. Well, fantastic. Because like guys that play poker, I love people that are horrible at it. <laughs> so um, <laughs> if you can stick around, um, you know, my mom doesn't let me, let me have nice things of my own. So she makes me bring my stupid brother on. Mm -hmm. And he comes with trivia. And, and that always seems to draw Engineer Andrew out of, out of his dungeon back there in the back of the studio. So let's see if we can get Andrew, Engineer Andrew in here as well. We've got Big T calling in. I, I understand he's got some drip for you this morning that he thinks you'll be impressed in, but we won't be able to see it over the radio. So you stick around. Big T's Five Minutes of Fame are coming up. This is SCVI and I lead School's Eye on the Valley. I'm Matt Watson, and this is your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI and I lead School's Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson, but forget about me. It is now time for Big T's Five Minutes of Fame. Y'all know Big T. He is a longtime resident and leader in the Santa Clarita Valley. He's an executive and a philanthropist. He's an absolutely amazing father, husband, community leader, and dog dad. And he's a man who never disappointed his own father because, well, because dad never expected much from him anyways. But he is still mom's favorite. Big T, welcome to the show. Good morning, Maddie. Good to have you, Big T. We've got uh, Jeff Barber. He's the manager of the main, the theater here in downtown Newhall. We got Jeff with us. We got Engineer Andrew with us. And so we're going to go ahead and play. You got some trivia for us. Y'all, y'all set? I'm all set. All righty. So, uh, so Jeff, uh, I don't know if you remember the rules of the game. Uh, Big T's going to throw out some trivia, and uh, if you know the answer, hit your buzzer. Buzzer. We don't have buzzers here in the studio, okay. so just call out your name. Okay. So we've got Andrew, we've got Jeff. I, I'm going to go by Frogger for some reason. Nobody knows why. Don't bother asking me why, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there is no reason. Uh, um, but we'll be Frogger, Andrew, and uh, and Jeff. Big T, what have you got for us? All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right. Where is Harvard, where is Harvard University located? Frogger. Frogger. Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, it is not in Boston. Have it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, son of a motherless goat. Nope. Yeah. God, I know it's I right know. there, but I don't know. Uh -huh. Okay, what is it? It's Cambridge. 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 Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Which is Boston adjacent. 
<laughs> adjacent. It's, it's oh, sorry. What? What adjacent city is Harvard located? <laughs> <laughs> right. So instead of a point, I'm going to give Harvard. myself a punt. <clears throat> which Which marine animals hold hands in their sleep to pre- prevent from drifting apart? Uh, Andrew. Andrew. I'm going to go lobsters. Incorrect. <laughs> Jeff, otherwise known as Six. Je- oh yeah. <laughs> sea otters. Sea otters is correct. Wow. Oh. All right. I was going to go with soccer moms. <laughs> <laughs> what song was behind the very first music video to premiere on MTV? Frogger. Frogger. So that was the Buggles. Video killed the radio star. That's correct. Yeah. The Buggles, not the Beatles. Who was the Don't first the woman? Beatles. Who was the first woman inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Frogger. Frogger. Was that the Queen of Rock and Roll, Tina Turner? Uh, incorrect. Uh, God rest her soul. Nothing. What do we got? Anybody? Anybody? She's nope. been called the Queen. <sighs> Come on now. Frogger's got it. Oh no, man! Go ahead, say it. What do we got? Got no R A S P E C T. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> Little Aretha Franklin. Yeah. What musical artist played a whopping 27 different instruments on their debut album? Frogger. Frogger. It's got to be Prince. And it's Prince. Yeah. <laughs> the goat. The, the, absolutely the goat. Absolutely. I mean, on his shoes alone. <laughs> How many legs does a spider have? Andrew. <laughs> I'm going to go eight. <laughs> eight is correct. <laughs> I think it's got to be a trick right, question, yeah, right? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what two states in the United States share the most borders with other states? Uh, I'll give you a point for each one. Oh. Andrew. Uh, ooh, uh, California and Texas? Uh, incorrect on both. Uh, okay. Oh, Jeff. Jeff. Colorado and Utah. Incorrect on both. Frogger, you got anything? Frogger, um, I'm going to go with Tennessee and Georgia. Uh, Tennessee's correct. Missouri was the second. One point for Frogger. All right. All right. All right. What is the longest above mountain, above water mountain range? Longest above water mountain range. Above water mountain Frogger. range. Frogger. I'm going Andes. Andes is correct. Hey, you got to say your name in the future. I, I thought I did. You right. let these rookies get away with it. Yeah. You might have. You might have. <laughs> it's tough for me to get this morning. Um, which country invented ice cream? Frogger. Frogger. Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. Jeff. United uh, States. It's in Asia. Oh, it is? Yes. Oh, Andrew, Japan. You know? Uh, incorrect. <laughs> Jeff, you got anything? Oh, he didn't hear your other answer, so go for I it. Yeah. Get back in there. The judges I... say answer. Korea. Boom. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> incorrect is China. Oh, okay. They invented it. Hendrix. I know. Hendrix, Larios, and Seagram's are our best selling brands of which spirit? Frogger. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's a more fun. Yeah. <laughs> Gin. Gin is correct. All right. Uh, what's the opposite of matter? Andrew. Andrew. Uh, antimatter. That is correct. I thought it was who cares. <laughs> Which of Newton's laws states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction? Frogger. Oh, Frogger. That's his third law. It is his third law, and it's the law of motion. <laughs> it's like Beethoven. There's three of them, right? It's like Beethoven. Just throw a number out there. I'm leaving. <laughs> we gave it to you. We're easy on this show. Right? <laughs> what, name, what name was given to the super team that included... Martin Manhunter, Aquaman, Green Lantern, Andrew. Flash, oh. Wonder Woman, Bat. Go ahead. Uh, the Justice League. Justice League of America. Mm-hmm. There we go. Nice. What band had a hit song with "Walk Like an Egyptian"? Jeff. The Bengals. Jeff. Bengals, good pull. There we go. Not to be what confused with the Buggles. Bat? Go ahead. <laughs> right. Different band. Not to be confused with the Buggles. Yeah. The Buggles and the Bengals. Right. Similar but different. You you just set a record for saying Buggles three times in ten minutes. <laughs> 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 what words were added to the Pledge of Allegiance in 1954? Frogger. Frogger. Under God. Under God. Take that, commies. What What color are the stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Andrew. 
Um, Andrew. Uh, red? Or Frogger? Incorrect. Frogger. Burgundy? Frogger. I'm cheating. I'm looking out the window right. of the studio here, and on the Western Walk of Fame, they're bronze. So I'm going with bronze. Incorrect. Dang it. Andrew was the closest so far, Jeff. <sighs> okay, if it's like an offshoot of Well, red. Jeff, it's um, pink? Pink is correct. Okay. Nice. Oh, yeah. Sounds like burgundy. What cartoon was the first to feature a solar-powered stamp liquor? Uh, can we say what? stamp liquor on the air? <laughs> <laughs> um, Frogger. Bugs Bunny. Frogger. <laughs> Incorrect. Okay. You know, it makes sense. They had robot everything else's. Jeff. Okay. The Jeff. Jetsons. Jetsons, correct. There it is. Nice. <laughs> what U.S. state is called the Centennial State? Jeff, Utah. Jeff? Close. <laughs> Frogger, Close Nevada. Proximity. Frogger, Nevada. Uh, incorrect. Uh, Wyoming. Uh. It's Colorado. Oh, okay. <laughs> Frogger, Colorado. Frogger. I'm Frogger. Big T. We got time for one more. I can't figure out. All right. During the American Revolution, what geographical landmark was Benedict Arnold going to turn over to the British? Frogger. Frogger. Was, uh, it wasn't Washington, D.C. Um, let's say Fort Knox. Uh, incorrect. Either of the other two? Um, an important one. I have no idea. An important one. <laughs> <laughs> it was West Point. Oh, ah, West Point. All right, Big T, we, we got to wrap it up there. Let's take a look at the scores. Hey, I did pretty well. <laughs> Seven to four. Hey, six. Pretty good showing. Very, right. very well done. Engineer Andrew, thank you for playing. <laughs> We want to thank our guest today, director of iLead Online Charter School, Kate Wolf, general manager of the main Jeff Barber, producer Sarah, engineer Carlos, engineer Andrew, Big T, and thank you for listening. Remember, life is hard, but we've all been put here to help each other along. Be well and do good. Join us again next week and every Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. I am Matt Watson, and this is SCVI and iLead School's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. <laughs>